In this video, we introduce the 802.11be standard, which is also known as Wi-Fi 7 or EHT for extremely high throughput. We will present the main features of this revision. While the focus of 802.11ax was high efficiency, 802.11be takes us back to the tradition of increasing the data rate. The first two features here fall squarely in that category with 4096 QAM being added and a doubling of the bandwidth to 320 MHz, something that becomes possible in the 6 GHz band. Other major features include significant improvements in spectrum allocation with a new concept of multiple resource units that is going to occupy us in a separate episode, as well as multi-link operation another groundbreaking feature, which we also dedicate an episode to. Metalink operation means that communication between an AP and a station may happen simultaneously over several links, potentially increasing the throughput and decreasing the latency. Doubling the bandwidth poses challenges for the RF front-end, but it also requires finding that bandwidth. And the new 6 GHz band is wide enough to offer several 320 MHz channels, as shown on this picture. There are three possible 320 MHz channels within that band, and two such combinations offset by 160 MHz from each other. As a side note, if you have the channel number, you can easily find the center frequency of that channel by using the WLAN channel frequency function from MathWorks Wireless LAN Toolbox. We covered the four different formats in HE in a previous episode of our series Wireless LAN Explained. EHT only has two PPDU formats, the multi-user format, which also supports single-user transmission, and the trigger-based format. We discussed in our previous episode about 802.11ax how transmission in 802.11ax requires the full primary channel to be available. For example, if the secondary 20 MHz channel is not available, no transmission larger than 20 MHz can take place. These restrictions are lifted with 802.11be with extended concepts for puncturing. In particular, EHT multi-user PPDUs can be sent as soon as all non-punctured 20 MHz channels are idle, whatever the location. There are still a few restrictions on puncturing, which we will discuss in our episode of this series Wireless LAN Explained about 802.11b MRUs and user allocation, but the scheme is much more flexible. 802.11b supports multiple space-time streams in a similar fashion as 802.11ax or 802.11ac. Up to 8 users with a maximum of 8 space-time streams and each user has a maximum of four space-time streams in a multi-user scenario. When transmitting to a single user, eight space-time streams can be sent to that one user. 802.11n had 77 schemes, 802.11ac10, 802.11ax12, 802.11b has 14 MCS schemes and two additional ones, MCS 14 and 15 for specific purposes. The first 14 schemes cover the range from BPSK to 4096 QAM. MCS 14 is for EHT duplicate mode and represents the equivalent of single user extended range in 802.11ax. MCS 15 is for dual carrier modulation case, which maps the same information to two subcarriers. Here is how easily you can generate a 4096 QAM 20 MHz EHT waveform with MathWorks Wireless LAN Toolbox. Declare an EHT MU configuration with 20 MHz channel bandwidth. Set the MCS to 13, which corresponds to the most aggressive modulation encoding scheme using 4096 QAM. A payload length and invoke the Wireless LAN waveform generator. The picture on the right shows the 4096-like constellation obtained for a frame with 70,000 bytes. 
let us dive a little more into waveform generation and look at a multi-user example. In the case of multi-user transmission, every user may be experiencing different channel conditions, and as a result, every modulation encoding scheme may be different. Furthermore, the packet length can also be different, especially if the MCS are different. So when you generate a multi-user transmission, you want to be able to specify all parameters for each user individually. The code on the left here illustrates this step. After choosing allocation indexes for the multi-user configuration, you can define for each user all characteristics needed, including the packet length, modulation encoding scheme, number of space-time streams, and so forth. On the right side, you can see the spectrum allocation for all users. You will notice puncturing of the second 20 MHz segment, which is signaled by the allocation index of 26. The next episode of this Wireless Line Explained series discusses the allocation indexes for EHT. Once the setup is complete, you can simply invoke the Wireless LAN Waveform Generator, which puts everything together. If you want, you can generate specific payloads for each user and invoke the Waveform Generator in the exact same way. This diagram summarizes the transmit chain for the data part of 802.11b packets. The view is identical to what we saw for 802.11ac and 802.11ax in earlier episodes. The main differences, which come from the fact that multiple resource units may be used, are not visible at this level. Of course, the constellation mapper now also supports 4096 QAM, and also multiple link operation is not represented. This concludes this episode of our series Wireless Unexplained, introducing the 802.11b standard, which is also known as Wi-Fi 7 or EHT for extremely high throughput. In our next episode, we introduce the concept of multiple resource units and discuss user allocation.